Hmm. Hello. I hope that you are doing well. I'm just going to give a second for people to hop on here just to kind of um, address some concerns that I've been receiving and um, yeah, just wanting to come live, take a break from memeing and writing my blog. Um, <laughs> I'm going to grab uh, my phone really fast. One second. So I can see the comments of people. All right. If you're watching, let me know by saying, hey, oof, yeah, don't want to do that. Okay. So I just wanted to have a conversation because, um, yeah, I've, I've had a lot of people, a lot of people reach out to me regarding a couple of things and I'm grateful because I do perceive myself to be a safe person. So, you know, like if people are struggling with something. thing that I want to talk about is energy and how everything is energy. So with regard to the challenges that human beings, hi, Sarah, um, with the challenges that human beings are facing today, um, you know, specifically around this fourth industrial revolution as it's happening, um, you know, this industrial revolution is a microscopic one. So um, that's why I've been sharing some information and just some loving tidbits on my page about how the smartest people that I know are detoxifying heavy metals. Um, so everything has a electromagnetic field. Everything has some kind of aura. Plants, animals, everything living <laughs> has an aura. And um, it's, you know, this protective, usually, right, this like protective field that is around you. And, um, you know, it depends on where you're at on a daily basis, what the condition of your electromagnetic field looks like. You know, somebody can like think something mean at you and, you know, there can be a little puncture in your energy field. So, um, yeah, just it's. It's interesting because here we find ourselves, right, in a society that does not really appreciate or value the importance of energy, even though everything is energy, everything is frequency, everything is sound. So, you know, people are walking around, frankly, I've never worked on someone and never have ever seen someone who has a healed, complete aura. I don't think that is possible. And I'm especially suspect of people who like claim to have like a perfectly clean, clear, and like fully functional energy field. We are, and you know, this live could trigger some people and that's okay. You know, I'm not trying to trigger anyone, but I am saying, hi, Laura Beth. Um, good to see you. So I am saying that like, you know, and you can look at like the monetary system for proof of this, that we are on somewhat of a prison planet. Like that's my, I mean, of course, like there's like the fruits of nature and, you know, there's so much beauty too. So it's not like it's just a prison planet, but it's definitely like it has that about it, right? Where we have been disconnected from our superpowers, which do come in the form of imagination, energy, having that natural awareness. If we did not have a boot under our ass or in our ass or under our, on top of our head, whatever, humans would actually have like a natural innate ability to play with and manipulate energy. That's just like, you know, so the solution from my perspective, because I have people reaching out to me about all kinds of potion, wink, wink, potion side effects, which like 
in the event that you received the potion, I'm not judging you at all. And why should, why should I, why I don't have any room to judge anyone. So in the event that some, you know, people are reaching out to me about their side effects from this potion and I've had at least 35 people, maybe more, reaching out to me about the side, like the, just the side effects of being around people who have received the potion. Mostly like hormonal imbalance, miscarriages, stillborns, um, you know, like people like losing like their uterine lining and other such things, right? So, yeah, so initially I was very like, disturbed and you know like it's hard I think when you hear information like that not to just go into a state of fear and I was telling my friend about this the other day how there's so much in the mainstream media like that's pretty fucking obvious to anyone with the eyes to see that there's major like propaganda and total just like bs right so but also that shows up too in the conspiracy community in the form of like trying to siphon our energy by getting us aroused into a state of fear. And I think that it's really good to like have at this time a working understanding of just energetic mechanics, science, you know, I think that it's a good time for that because that is, I think, because every illness, every problem, everything that happens, every emotional woe or thought form or whatever starts energetically first as above, so below, so below, so below, so below, but whatever, that's like a different story for a different day. So I just wanted to share with you guys some of the things that I've personally done because I have been around people who have had the potion and I have not felt any abnormalities in terms of my hormones or in terms of, you know, which is I'm grateful and I feel, you know, happy about that. And I think that a concept or a um, perspective or whatever, ha it, it only has as much energy as you give it. So there's that right off the gate. And, you know, one thing that I've found too to be helpful is to, because, and this is where we get into pseudoscience or just me using my clairvoyance or my psychic sight to kind of like ascertain what could be happening. And this is my perspective. So you can just chuck it if it doesn't resonate with you doesn't make a difference to me. I'm just sharing for people who might want to hear this information. This shedding transmission from the potion, it seems to be happening digitally. <laughs> so, um, you know, I don't have a source, right? No source for my intuition, but it seems to be happening digitally. And that's why I think it's important to release our, you know, body of metals. Um, do your due diligence. I know some systems of releasing heavy metals aren't necessarily safe, but I've had really um, good luck with ionic foot baths and fasting and that kind of thing. Um, more like since last year, because I just got this like huge fucking push to like, you know, get clear and get serious, not, you know, I mean, obviously like laughter is the best medicine, but, um, but so one thing that I've found to be personally effective in warding off, if you are unpotioned and you are concerned about the transmission of the potion, then one thing that I've found is you can set your electromagnetic field to turn the mRNA, synthetic, whatever, spike protein, whatever it is, science, back on itself. That's just one thing that I've recognized. If you are concerned about, um, about the effects of transmission or shedding of the potion, that would be my suggestion. Um, you know, this industrial revolution is a nano one, and it's not, I, not here to say that it's bad or good, but, you know, we can look at metal, we can look at water as two things that are programmable, highly, highly programmable, right? So, um, 
you know, as far as I'm concerned, since the inception of this particular form of electricity that we have, you know, like it's been largely about frequency control from what I personally intuit since the initial industrial revolution in the early 1900s. And with that awareness, we can say, okay, metal, which most people are full of, even people who cleanse themselves, it's not like you walk outside, metal, you drink water, metal, even organic foods, metal, you know, so it's like, you know, it is what it is on some level that we can try to take the steps to help ourselves if we can. But with the awareness that metal and water both are highly, highly programmable, which they are, we can have that awareness and say, okay, if I know that there are frequencies that are like basically like playing on the loudspeaker of the world, I'll just say that like for ease, so I don't have to explain myself, <laughs> but if there are frequencies that are playing on the loudspeaker of the world, then this is an opportunity for us to cultivate some spiritual anti-fragility. I learned about this, this anti-fragile concept from a friend of mine. Um, I don't think we're friends anymore, but it's okay. Thank you so much for introducing me to that word. Anti-fragility is where like you are unaffected, unbothered because of how centered you are in your energy. So this is an opportunity, I think, for us to practice cultivating some spiritual anti-fragility by, you know, imbibing in the awareness that we are programmable because of how much water our body consists of and because of how much metal is in our bodies, we are programmable. So no one, including myself, including all these teachers claiming perfection, which is total BS in my opinion, all of these people, everyone in the world lives in a inverted world in a mind controlled society. That's just how it is. Frequency is everything. And the frequencies that play on the loudspeaker of the world are not necessarily empowering. In fact, lately more so they've been about humans are the virus. It's you. That's the virus. There's been a lot of like suicidal tones. So yeah, I take offense to that on some level and, you know, still we can like, we can program ourselves. We can listen to rife frequencies or, you know, a certain hertz that works for our bodies and for our energy systems. And we can turn this synthetic mRNA, whatever it is, back on itself from this potion, allegedly. Yeah, so I'm less likely to accept a friend request when someone is commenting on every post about it. So I see you. Um, but yeah, so anyway, having said that, I just wanted to, yeah, just come on and say that I think that this is an opportunity that we have as a society, whether you are potioned or unpotioned, no judgment. I cannot judge you because I am a, um, I am working towards wholeness, but I'm not there yet. Maybe I won't be there in this lifetime. Who fucking knows? Today, I'm not there. I, so I'm not judging anyone for accepting the potion. I am not judging anyone for not accepting the potion. It's just what it is. It's, we have choices, even when we think we don't have choices. So that is, I guess, like a big part of what I wanted to talk about. We have to learn how to program ourselves. And there's ways through, through affirmations, through, um, through music, through sound, through creativity, and really just taking our creation back um, and being willing to endeavor upon unlearning the harmful programs that we were taught, like how school is basically like prison and, you know, how just there's so much, right? Like there's so much I could get into all of the various different kinds of programming. So on some level, this already happened pre-Sharona times, and this is just a new level. This is 
the time, I think, to cultivate some spiritual anti-fragility, if that is something that is of interest to you. But if it's not, then, okay, great. You know, it's all choice, right? You know, I do perceive that there is a little bit of a culling going on, you know, and, and that's, I don't, I don't take kindly to that as someone who cares deeply for people. But, you know, all of this to say, use your intention to program yourself and be willing to unlearn some of the non-beneficial programs that you have so that your soul, your spirit can speak to you. Because if you do that, you will find natural, potentially free solutions like the one I'm offering with the mRNA reversal on the outside of your field. So yeah, um, that's, I think what I wanted to say, let me see. Okay, so um, I want to get into next um, expectations of, and this is a little bit less like macro and a little bit more micro macro both. And I want to address a couple of other concerns that people have been reaching out to me about. And also, I'm so grateful to be seen as a safe person for people who are like questioning things, who are like, I'm grateful for that because, you know, I would never want to judge someone for just the way that they're like perceiving and believing. And so just, um, yeah, so I'm grateful for that. But I wanted to talk a second about expectations and how, um, because this is something that's come up a lot in my personal life in the last, um, in the last few months is just sort of like unconsciously, mostly um, having like expectations of other people's behavior, of other people's actions, what I want someone to do compared to like what they're doing. And It is very, very futile, in my opinion, to have expectations of other people. All you can control is you. All you can control is your own energy field. All you can control is your own choices. And it kind of brings me back to like the serenity prayer, right? Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, the wisdom to know the difference. And I kind of think that we can change a lot more than we think we can based on a foundation of learning how to work with energy, but, and learning how to deprogram ourselves, you know, just because some of those programs take up space and in our field, you know, there is, it's not like there, we are boundless and we have a form that can only hold so much, right? So um, it's like a yes and kind of thing. But in the acceptance of things I cannot change category, I would put like expectations of other people's behavior. And this can be applied to the potion. This can be applied to relationships. This can be applied to pretty much everything where like there's this like, I don't know, I swear it's just how relationships happen here. Like where we like cord one another because we're like unconsciously expecting something of them. And then when it doesn't happen, we get bummed out or depressed. So whether or not you're wanting people, everyone in the world to take this potion, or whether or not you're upset that someone in your reality took the potion, it doesn't, you know, I'm not trying to be polarizing, but I am just like, just trying to speak openly. And um, so expecting anything of anyone else outside of you is very, it's futile. And if this needs to be said, you are not the savior of humanity. (laughs) Giving your body to the state is not going to save anyone. (laughs) I mean, I think that's pretty obvious probably to those who are watching this, but um, we're like, I am not your savior. You are not my savior. And that's to do with all levels of everything regarding the potion or not regarding the potion. So, um, yeah. And I think that it's really just setting ourselves up to be disappointed on some level, having these grandiose expectations of what other people are going to do. That's just not, 
I just wouldn't endeavor upon that. I think that's kind of, yeah, it's just, it's dangerous. And I'm also sharing that as a uh, reminder to myself, you know, because I need these reminders too. So the other thing that I wanted to come share is about some concerns I have been receiving. So in the last maybe 24 hours, there are five people who have sent me these like qualms and concerns about potion passports. And I don't know how to make this into, basically I'll just say re-education camps, okay? <laughs> Cause this is something that, and I, I think that the people who know me, who knew me before 2020 know that I had a big, like a lot of information come through about a lot of things that people were not ready to hear. That's okay. No worries. Yes, Sarah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so in the process of really like kind of, I thought that I, I don't know, I wasn't sure if I was having visions or if it was just like my fear getting the best of me, because right now, at least in the States, you know, this potion passport is not a thing quite yet. And these re-education quarantine camps are also not a thing yet. I mean, except for in New York where they have, I think, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but you know, and so people who maybe last year, you know, just maybe would have considered me to be like going crazy or like subversive conspiracy theorists, whatever, are reaching out to me like shit, <laughs> you know, this could be a thing, which sort of goes to this concept of like taking our imagination and creation back. I can't say that that will not be a reality for everyone, for anyone. You know, I can't say that it won't be a reality for anyone, but I do want to just empower you all to use your imagination for you and try your best not to give so much energy over to this re-education camp, Quaxine passport. Though if you are, you know, there's a voluntarist group in Charlotte, North Carolina that I work with. Um, you know, we plant seeds and talk about how much we hate Bill Gates. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not really, but I don't really, I don't even know if he's a real person to be honest, but these are just, you know, some of the, there are solutions basically is what I'm saying. We'll be able to go to farmer's markets. We'll be able to go, you know, in the event that that is made a thing. It's a possible timeline, exactly. But I don't want to take a piece of my energy, which is what this artifice, <laughs> what, what the matrix wants, right? Is for us to take a piece of our energy and anchor it into the future at that point in time. That's what the machine wants is for, because we are creating all of this at the end of the day, which is why, you know, I think, so, whatever. So all of that to say, I just, um, it's a possible timeline and the more that I think people can like, you know, maybe wake up to that, the better, because then there's more awareness. And a lot of this is very much based on our reaction to things like, you know, the vaccine passport was a thing that was on the table and then people had a massive outrage and now it's like a little less on the table, but still like, you know, it's like adjacent to the table. So a lot of this is based on our reaction and like for myself, you know, when I was going through those visions, those experiences last year, I had to come, come to a point where I was like, okay, at what point do I compromise my integrity, my belief system, whatever, to do something so that I can join a society or be a part of a society that I don't even like. I don't like the society. I never have. So the odds of me favoring security and safety over freedom and autonomy, it, they're very little, right? And so I faced that within myself of like, okay, well, if, that, if that's a thing, if these re-education camps or whatever, like, or if hunger or homelessness or whatever, you know, are 
if giving up comforts are are the price to pay for you know receiving this potion or not receiving this potion then i guess i'll meet y'all at the gulags <laughs> you know like i've already decided that this is the hill that i die on like literally and i'm not trying to say that to because for me i don't feel any fear around that so because I faced them when I had those psychic experiences last year that I, I am so open to being wrong. It's like, not even funny. Like I'm so beyond open and, you know, and I'm still open to the infinite possibilities that could exist for us. So, um, in the meantime, though, I think it is cool to learn about how energy works to like, learn how to shield and protect yourself from, um, you know, if you consider it to be like harmful mRNA shedding or side effect, just whatever it is, like, or just the impact of tyranny that it, as it, you know, sits in the human spirit, it's not, it doesn't feel good, right? So really, really good always to find yourself at the center of yourself to use sound and frequency and you know, and I really like want to come up with a whole website where I just like put a whole bunch of like subversive solutions for the times on it. But anyway, all of that to say, we're not there yet. And we still have some time. So for me, I have every time I go to the store, I get extra food, I get extra water, you know, just not from a place of fear, but just from a place of like preparedness and like wanting to set myself up for just, you know, the most optimal future that I can. Right. And, you know, and I've also been trying to take good care of myself, how I know how, which is through nutrition, through supplementation, through energy and energy is the primary component of that. Um, and yeah, so yeah, that's all. I just wanted to come on and share some um, solutions for the times and just really appreciate you all for, um, you know, just holding space for this. It's not my my word is not law. Like these are my intuitions. I trust them because they've worked for me. Um, you know, if my spirit says go here, I go there and or here, <laughs> you know, and that's just how I've grown to live my life. It doesn't mean that I can't find value and meaning in belief systems or, pro, you know, what I consider to be programs or whatever, like, but at the same time, like, I trust myself, and I'm going to say this unabashedly, I trust myself over science, I trust myself over religion. And when I say myself, I'm talking about my highest self, my soul family and the field of creation. That's what I trust. Um, you know, there's some really awesome, you know, things that come out in science and there's some truisms in every holy book and in every like umbrella of thought and belief and perspective, right? There's a lot of good stuff out there for sure. And I personally am not going to hook myself up to a particular ideology. And now everything that that ideology suggests is law is law. That's not the place that I come from. And I will never like bow down to the God of science because a well-funded belief system is a religion. Okay. It just is like, you know, and whatever, like, you know, no judgment. What you make as your higher power is what you make as your higher power. For me, my over self, the top of my self is my higher power. And I work with that energy directly and have like gotten little nudges and little pulls. And, and I trust those because when I listen to that little voice that is inside of me, that is never fear-based, always calm, always collected, um, I never lose when I listen to that voice, even if the majority of the world or whatever, even if it's not the majority, I don't know, but I listen to that voice, even when the majority of the world is going against it. I could be the only one here right now who is having these thoughts and feelings, though I know I'm not the only one having these thoughts and feelings and visions and whatever. I could be the only person and I would still 
walk in the other direction if my spirit, my higher self told me to. And that's just the kind of faith that I have in myself. Right, Sarah. And, you know, it's like, I don't, I mean, I personally don't think it's any better than, you know, than religion or, you know, it's just, but there are like, there are pieces of science that I find really interesting, like, you know, especially obviously like quantum physics, quantum mechanics, all that shit, you know, but it's just, um, but yeah. And so I'm not trying to like also piss on science and I know really nice doctors and nurses alike. So it's just, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> and for me, I will never um, bow to science, but I also like, you know, will never bow to white man in the sky. No offense you know, just, I'm just saying, like, I personally feel like both science and religion are just boxes to kind of control people. And it's, it's all choice, even though it seems like it's not, it, it is on some level. So I don't know. I, yeah. Anyway, if you have any questions about anything that I've shared, um, now would be the time because I'm probably going to get back to actually writing my blog and being productive like a person. Um, and I'm offering energy work sessions if anybody would ever, you know, no pressure, just, um, but have been enjoying doing my energy work. I'll put my booking link here. Hi, Erin, how you doing? Here's my energy work link. You just go over to the energy work tab, no pressure, you know, um, but these are just a couple of things that I wanted to share unabashedly, and I really appreciate everyone for regarding um, this with respect, because it's just an another perspective and not any better or worse than, than your perspective. It just is what it is. So anyway, thank you for listening to uh, my ridiculous misinformation and um, thought crime. And I hope that you have an awesome rest of your day. Please take care of yourself. Please drink water. Please know that you are water. And yeah, that's it. Oh, thank you. Aaron. Bye.